Hello and welcome to yet another interesting episode of the Reflection Series, where we share stories to recharge and rejuvenate. And today we are with you with yet another interesting story, which is titled Recognizing My Inner Talents. And to share the story with us, we have today Linda Cooper. Linda is a mother, grandmother, and the coordinator of the Brahma Kumari Center on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia, and has been practicing meditation for the past 43 years. And about the topic today, which is about recognizing my inner talents, Linda says that she realized that she had inner talents and has, had been using them. They were not academic, but virtues and inner qualities that developed over time, which helped her achieve inner happiness and gave her the ability to help others. So would like to know what happened and how did you realize and how did it feel when you realized it? So feels like a treasure found there. So let's hear it from Linda. So a very warm welcome, Linda. Welcome, and it's over to you. Thank you, Lata. That was a lovely introduction. And um, yes, my little story about um, these inner talents that I discovered I had, but um, for a long time, I didn't realize that I had anything to offer um, the world and when I was a child um, I was uh, very slow at school and not really that interested and as time went by um, I left school when I was about 15 and didn't have any qualifications at all um, because I just felt you know I just couldn't um, do anything or learn anything and I'd much rather be out in nature and doing things like that outside in the countryside. As I grew up in England and we had um, lots of open fields and nature all around me. So um, yes, I was much more interested in that. So when eventually when I did leave school, I just went to work in shops and things like that. But eventually, um, when I got married, um, I had uh, two, two little boys and um, I felt a big responsibility for their life, um, looking after them and bringing them up, bringing them up well. And um, I, I was wanting to give them the best I possibly could, um, a bit, the best life, the best upbringing. Um, as I'd seen a lot of elderly men wandering around the streets and things like that. And I thought I have to help them, my sons, um, get the best out of life. And um, so I, I searched around everywhere looking for a good, good school and whatever, um, but eventually came across the Montessori method, which some of you may know about, where they had a, a real deep respect for children. And so um, this is what I wanted. I wanted the children to be treated with respect. So I met someone who would help me uh, create a play group for the children. And we organized this um, play group in a, a school. So I had to go along and ask the school headmaster if um, we could use a room for this um, little play group with these children friends that I knew had children who were interested as well and we started this play group and um, it, it was so successful and it was such a lovely um, group. Um, eventually I had to let we left and moved to Sydney but the people who were in the play group um, one of the ladies um, helped start a Montessori school and it eventually went on to become a high school. So that was um, my first, perhaps um, big realization 
that um, you know, just had to have the courage to go out and do something and ask the, um, the school if we could have a room to start this play group. And um, I was a bit nervous about whether we would get the room, but we did. So that was my first step, I feel, that moved me on the way to learning and doing more in that way. And um, eventually I, I moved to uh, the Sunshine Coast uh, for a couple of years, spent some time up there. And I was on my own and uh, I decided um, I wanted to uh, teach meditation. And I had learned um, Brahma Kumari's meditation um, some time before that. And um, I decided I wanted to teach meditation on the Sunshine Coast. So this meant I had to go around to all different people and ask them if I could have a room and could I create these programs and, uh, you know, uh, if they could help me advertise, etc. cetera, which, which happened. And um, I went to so many places and uh, started to give positive thinking courses and meditation courses. And uh, we had bigger programs where I invited the coordinator of the Brahma Kamaris to come along to and um, talk at as well on the Sunshine Coast. And uh, in between that, I also met someone who was working at a community radio. And um, I don't know why, for some reason, I had this such a desire to be, be a presenter on a radio station. So um, I went along and was able to do a little course so at a community radio. Um, so you're really a volunteer. And I went along and did a, a little course and um, I had to create the whole program myself. All I really learned from the sessions was um, how to use the equipment. Um, so that was uh, interesting. And then I had to learn how to put a program together. So I did that playing um, meditation music and meditation commentaries for children and adults for about 12 months I did that and that was um, something too I always wanted to do was I love speaking on uh, loudspeakers you know or microphones or for some reason I had this desire to do that but I really enjoyed that program it was so good and the actual learning the actual fact that I could actually learn and do that and then I eventually moved back to um, the Gold Coast and um, I was there for a short time at the Brahma Kumari Center on the Gold Coast, still here. I'm still here um, in the center. Um, but um, I also wanted to give talks at some of the libraries. And um, I decided to ask if I could give talks there. And this actual, having this courage to go along and ask, uh, knowing that you may get knocked back and, and give talks to people. Um, it was um, really something new for me, uh, doing, doing sort of regular talks and being asked to come as well. So the libraries would sometimes ask me to come and give a talk. If I couldn't, if they didn't ask me, I would go again and ask them if they had a space some time that I could give a talk. So this, this again was uh, something uh, new for me. I wasn't much, I'm not a professional speaker, um, but I found ways to learn how to present programs in meditation um, for anyone that could come along with, you know, just simple knowledge and um, sharing that. And um, yeah, we yes, we shared virtues and meditation. And in some of the libraries, um, up to about 50 people would come along. And again, this was a little bit daunting for me, but I still did it. And uh, people were so appreciative afterwards. They'd come up to me and thank me. And I really felt like I, I hadn't really done much, but they were so happy to learn to be able to learn something new that could help them uh, create a better life. 
So eventually on the Gold Coast, I managed to give talks um, in all the libraries. So I think there's about 12 libraries on the Gold Coast. And, um, and I did that for a few years. Then the, um, the libraries changed their system. So they couldn't, uh, we couldn't um, actually do these talks anymore, which was a real shame because I, it was something I really loved doing. And uh, just the fact that people were so happy afterwards was um, uh, a really nice thing. And um, at the moment, I'm in the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Centre, and here we have some outside programs happening too now, one that has been going for about um, uh, over six years on the north side of the Gold Coast. And um, it's been really successful too, mostly with women. And um, yes, they're um, so appreciative. So it's really lovely to, um, for me, it gives me great joy to be able to go out and uh, do these programs. But also the things that I've learned, you know, about myself that I do have, things that I can share with others. You know, I always have this thought, I don't have anything I can share. But once I started practicing meditation, I started to get to know myself a little bit better and realize there was lots of things I could do if I just put my mind to it and had the desire to do it or the desire and the, um, yes, the desire to learn. So that's just a little bit about my, um, <laughs> my life. Um, so I have, hope you, that was uh, good information, Lata. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> was enjoying listening to that. And it's like, uh, you know, I was enjoying the story how like you evolved initially. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, the feeling that you shared about not sure, but I do want to uh, give the children a good life. But then because of that strong desire, you were able to put that uh, one step of courage and how it flourished. Yes, that's right. Yes, that was um, really lovely to be able to do that for the children and um, just to see the way they change too, you know, by um, learning these new methods of teachings. Yeah, yes. So do, do you, would you say uh, like both, these two things, like having a strong desire gives a, a momentum uh, to take that one step of courage. Because sometimes some have the desire, but do not have courage, but some have courage, but not the pure desire. So mm. Mm. What, mm. what would you like to say about that? Yes, yes, I would say so. I think if there's a need, you know, there was a need there, I felt, um, to, that the children needed um, to, to be taught um, how to look after themselves in, a, in a, a really respectful way. So I felt that was um, something that um, I wanted to do. And uh, it was, there was, there was, and so I did look for it. So yes, definitely the desire and the need was there. And then um, actually that running that radio program was, I don't know, for some reason I had this desire to do that. So yes, it certainly spurs you ahead. And, you know, you might think, oh, I can't, um, you know, I can't do something like that. You know, I've never done anything like this. I haven't got any learnings or I haven't learned how to do that. But to actually... You've got to have, I think I, for myself, I had to have that desire to do it because I jumped in head first and had to learn and then get on the radio, you know, and not falter <laughs> on the radio. You know, you've got to be there and you've got to also learn how to put a program together, which was also quite tricky, you know. You know, if you're playing music, you've got to know what's going to come up next and you've got to be quick with it. And so many buttons and <laughs> knobs to 
press, you know, so the desire and the courage, yes. And you might not, you might, I had, yeah, you can have the feeling I can't do it, but just give it a go <laughs> and mm -hmm. try it out. I like the thing that you mentioned that uh, with the desire to do it, there should be a openness to learn as well. Mm -hmm. Because it's possible that we may have the desire and the courage and we kind of uh, take that step but mm. we are not prepared well enough and mm. that might give us a setback and mm. we may fall back into our initial, you know, little pond of, oh, I don't think I'll be able to kind of a thing. Yes. I think, you know, that it's just that failure, isn't it? Your fear of failure that you won't be able to do it. And um, if, you, if you just take that step and you might find when you get there, Oh, you know, it's a bit too much. I can't do it. But just keep going and um, see how you go. And, you know, it could be something you really get to love to do. And, um, you know, some, you, sometimes you might feel, oh, you look a bit silly or you say the wrong thing, um, you know. But, you know, it's all part of learning and everyone, we're all human. So being kind to yourself as well. So learning to be kind to the self and um, be determined. So that determination, courage. If you see an opportunity, you, you've got to, if you have that desire and you see an opportunity, which I felt I did when I did the radio program, there was an opportunity there for me to learn. So I just said, yes, I'm going to do it, you know? And um, it was not easy. It wasn't easy. All I got taught was how to, press the buttons on the machine and how to play this, how to play that. But how to put a radio program together was uh, another thing. And, you know, being very quick, um, so it would flow and everything like that. So, yes, definitely. Yeah. Desire, opportunity, courage. Um, you know, it all, it all brings happiness. It just creates happiness. And it's wonderful how you're saying that, you know, with the, uh, like, we take a step of courage and this determination. And when we are on that path, we kind of realize that we have much more, which yes. was kind of hidden. Yes. So it's like one leading to the other. And then it's like a bouquet of talents and qualities mm. that just mm. emerges. Yes, that's right. And um, at the libraries too, you know, having that desire to do that, those sessions. And, um, you know, I met so many nice people who uh, ran the programs. So I made friends with them. So that was a really nice thing. And then when people actually came along to the program and when they were leaving, you know, they were just so appreciative. They were so thankful. And, you know, it just gives you a lot of happiness that you've actually helped people, even though you might think, oh, you know, I, I don't know whether I'll get this right. And they might think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not saying the right thing. And you need to explain things to people and be aware. And, uh, you know, it was, it was just a, a new, new thing. But, uh, and, you know, I'm just an ordinary person. I didn't feel like, like I was saying, I didn't have any academic skills or speaking skills. And um, uh, yes, I, I was actually surprised <laughs> at the okay. amount of appreciativeness that people gave for the programs, the library programs. Yeah. And you mentioned that, during then you, you had started learning meditation and because of meditation, it kind of gave you that inner power to go ahead and yes. do and serve mm -hmm. and share. Yes, when I started to meditate, um, I found you know that the type of meditation that I learned, Brahma Kamari's, the philosophy was so beautiful and uh, it really touched my heart and um, I felt this is something I want to share with other people, but um, how to share it was something else, you know. So just that learning myself 
um, trying to get it right for myself as much as possible and gaining that inner strength from that and confidence. So giving the programs gave me confidence, but also um, just learning to understand who I was, who I am, um, you know, that, um, okay, um, I'm just in this, playing this part in this ordinary body, um, you know, I'm just an ordinary person. What do I have to share? And when I actually felt that, um, that I had something to share through learning meditation, I had something that I could share with other people and share with the world, you know, wherever you go, you can share it anywhere. So it's a really lovely opportunity to practice meditation and, um, yeah, and uh, share it with others. <laughs> yeah, and talking about sharing and meditation uh, would you like to uh, lead us into a meditation use uh, via commentary that would be beautiful yes thank you Lata thank you so sitting comfortably find a place to relax and sit comfortably. Take a few deep breaths. Breathe slowly in and out and allow your mind to relax. Now, imagine in your mind a beautiful forest. All forests are beautiful. So in your mind, you see this beautiful forest. You step into the path, into the forest. On a beautiful path of soft leaves. The leaves are soft and cool on your bare feet. Slowly, gently, quietly into the forest. You feel the cool, fresh air. your body and your mind. It refreshes your mind. I feel peaceful and relaxed. As I'm walking along, I look up to the canopy of trees above me. And there's a hint of the blue sky. Slowly the sun starts to shine through the canopy, spreading a soft glow on the path in front of me. Lighting up the path for me to walk through. I'm now feeling more relaxed, more peaceful. My mind 
feels calm. I am calm. I am peaceful. Slowly, as my mind becomes more peaceful, I start to get a feeling of who I really am. Who am I? beautiful being. I have many inner talents and qualities like peace, love, happiness, bliss. And I realize through this quiet experience that I have lots to share with the world, with my friends, with people I meet, with family. Once I know myself as this beautiful being, I can share my qualities and love with the whole world. I experience this beautiful forest and it reminds me of who I really am. soft pathway out of the forest, bringing with me the experience, peace, quiet, calmness, happiness and bliss. this experience any time I wish throughout my ordinary day and share this lovely vibration with others. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda, for that beautiful meditation experience and also for sharing your story with us. I'm sure it has inspired all our viewers to recognize deep within what our inner talents are and start using them so we can start discovering more and more hidden inner talents that each one of us have. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And for our online viewers, if you would like to know more about us, please do visit our website, which is www.brimhakumaris.org.au. It is flashing on the screen right now. You could contact us, you could come to our programs or visit any of your local center. So thank you once again for joining and we will see you again with another interesting story. Till then, Take care, Om Shanti, and keep finding your inner talents. See you.